Hello there YouTube, this is NecroStevo and it's time for a quick little team builder for week 6 in Division 1 Season 4 of the Pokemon Premier League. This week's matchup is up against Slyro and the Pittsburgh Pyroar, so if you have not seen my previous bouts against him, we've actually never beaten him in the Pokemon Premier League before. So, if you haven't uh, seen his battles, he's a great battler. His information will be in the description for you to check him out. You can see his team over on the right here. We, uh, he has a Victini. There's, there's just no real playing around that. That is the number one threat on his team for our team. Uh, we don't have priority outside of maybe running Aqua Gen on Blastoise or Ice Shard on Weavile. Um, I can run Scarfers. A Scarf Garchomp actually would be pretty interesting here, but I like some other options instead. But Victini and um, really Breloom are the two main things on his team that I'm worried about. Uh, he could also try to run Tyranitar alongside Mega Steelix. Uh, I do think by doing that he's kind of um, doubling up on a lot of his ground weaknesses a bit much. So I don't anticipate that he, that he will do that. Rather, I really see him trying to bring into this battle some type of spike uh, or entry hazard offense rather because he has almost every type of entry hazard represented on his team he's really only missing spikes um, but yeah so that means the game plan for this match is actually going to be volt switching around as much as we can and u-turning and then um trying to break his team with garchomp and weavile i have an analytic eviolite magneton with um, Magneton Speed is really just here to outspeed Max Speed Tyranitar, um, barring a Choice Scarf, of course. Uh, with Analytic, if he switches out, we get a nice boost to our moves, um, akin to a Life Orb, basically. And uh, if Steelix is alive, I don't have to click uh, Volt Switch. I can actually just click Hidden Tower Fire. If Steelix comes in, I can go for Magnet Rise, forcing him into the suboptimal. Uh, I guess Fire Fang would be his best move to hit me. So I really like those options there. Um, Flash Cannon gets solid neutral coverage against his entire team, bar Tentacruel. And I guess Victini, but I, I can stand on Tentacruel and hit it with a Volt Switch. I can't really stand on Victini anyway. I had great luck breeding Magneton and I actually ended up with a Hidden Power, two Hidden Power Fire ones with Fantastic IVs, or Outstanding, I guess, if you want to be literal. I also got a Hidden Power Ground, and I got a couple of Hidden Power Water ones, all with Analytic. So I was very pleased to have some of those ready to go for the future. Um, I was considering running Hidden Power Ground for this matchup, but Fire has slightly, uh, you know, better secondary coverage in case he wants to try to switch in Breloom or Glaceon to predict a, a Volt Switch or something like that. They get slightly, ever so slightly harder by the Hidden Power Fire, so I kind of want those options. And Victini I can Volt Switch on. Um, anyways, if he uh, has like a speed drop from V Create. Our next team member is going to be a Choice Scarf Primeape. Finally having to run the Jolly Nature. We haven't had to do that for a while, normally Adamant has been enough. But in this situation, I have enough speed here to outspeed a max speed Togekiss. With the, uh, with the timid nature, of course. And then the rest, I actually wanted to throw into special defense to raise the probability that I can live a air slash from Togekiss. Uh, Primeape is really nice in this matchup because it dissuades him from going for Sticky Web. With Primeape being grounded and Sticky Web lowering speed, I will get a Defiant boost, and since I have Choice Scarf, my Primeape will still be relatively fast to go against this team. I do have to kind of spam U-turn in the early game, which is nice though, because his only real switch-ins for Primeape are Togekiss. Um, he could switch in Reuniclus. I don't recommend it, because it still takes a pretty good chunk from U-turn. Uh, he could even switch in Victini, but then from there, I can bring in something else to threaten. Uh, Togekiss is handled by Stone Edge. I really didn't want to run Stone Edge, but I would, uh, that's really the best secondary coverage move for his team. Um, I could run Punishment to hit Reuniclus, but I would rather just not let Reuniclus set up by forcing it out, by going out into Blastoise with Dark Pulse or going out into um, my Weavile, for example. Both of those kind of force out the Reuniclus. I do have to be aware that with Primate, um, I he does still outspeed me with the Choice Scarf Victini, 
So I don't want to just have my primate dropped immediately by a V-Create or from, by a Zen headbutt or anything like that. So I kind of have to figure out if he's running Choice Scarf Victini because I feel like that's something that he will lead off with because it gets a good solid hit against off against the majority of my team rather. I did go for Earthquake as another secondary coverage move because like on Garchomp, um, Stone Edge and Earthquake offer fantastic neutral coverage hitting everything on his team bar the Breloom. And Breloom can't take a close combat. So I'm pretty um, I'm pretty happy with that option. Our next member, so this is going to be our little Volt Turn core here. We finally get a chance to use Rotom uh, Cut Form. I haven't been able to use him, or rather I haven't elected to use him since week one where we played against Kelly. But here, his speed tier at base 86 speed is really, really nice, outspeeding Tyranitar, Togekiss, Reuniclus, Dredagon, Mega Steelix, Breloom, Glaceon, and Ariado, so I don't have to run um, max speed. And I would go modest here, but I really would like uh, Rotom speed just to outspeed Togekiss. Um, and I don't need max investment, so I can grab a little bit of bulk there. Uh, really, all I need here are these first three moves. The last move, I. I could put Will-O-Wisp in there. I don't really want to be choiced into Will-O-Wisp. It would be nice if I'm in a weird situation, like say he tries to set up with Dragon Dance Tyranitar or something. I can trick it a choice specs. That neuters that. But I honestly don't want to give specs to too many things on this team. Dredagon doesn't want specs. Breloom doesn't want specs. Anything else could possibly benefit from the specs, honestly. So I don't anticipate having to use that option. But that really depends on what he's going to do. Uh, with Max Special Attack... Um, the neutral nature on spe max special attack. Leaf Storm blows away a good half of his team, which is really, really nice. Um, I do have Thunderbolt there just in case I get into a situation where I know I'm faster and I need a stronger hit. And I, that's really more from mid to late game, though. Otherwise, early game, we are going to be Volt Switching and U-Turning as much as possible to keep the hazards off the field, to stop things from setting up. Um, if Victini gets off a uh, V-Create, we can really punish that option as well. Uh, we can also punish Reuniclus trying to set up with Calm Mind, or even Togekiss with Nasty Plot. I am, I can see him trying to baton pass Nasty Plots from Togekiss to either Reuniclus or possibly uh, the Glaceon or Victini. I don't think those are as strong options because if he does that, he if I keep all U-Turning and Volt Switching around, I'm going to be able to put him in a position where I can immediately react to whatever he sends it out to, or I can at least hit that thing really, really hard. Um, our next teammate is going to be one of our two win conditions, and that's going to be Swords Dance Garchomp. Very standard set here with just with Life Orb and Rough Skin. I actually might change Rough Skin to Sand Veil because I feel like he's rigging Tyranitar, and that would just be really fun to me to take advantage of that with Sand Veil and dodge some of his moves with Sand Veil. Ruskin does um, kind of punish any options he might go for with Breloom or Dredagon or Tyranitar. But, you know, for contact and discredit. But um, really, he's not here to get touched this week, though. Garchomp is here to end some major lives. And Garchomp is really nice if he decides to not bring Choice Scarf Victini, like if he goes Bandit or if he goes Mixed uh, and Life Orb or something like that. Then I'll speed him with my Garchomp, which would be awesome. But of course, he knows that going into this match. So I, I'm expecting to see Choice Scarf Victini. But it is nice because I can take advantage of him being Choice Scarf into the uh, into different options. I do have to see if he has Glaciate. Without Glaciate, he can't really touch Garchomp that's at full HP or even at 75% HP, honestly. Uh, but if he has Glaciate and he's Choice Scarf, then I have. Uh, several things to bring in on that, including our other win condition, which is Weavile. Um, I did decide to go Pursuit Weavile this week, just because I can bring it in on Victini after a V-Create, trap it. I can bring it in on Reuniclus after Reuniclus maybe KO something and trap it. Uh, he doesn't, the only thing that he has that wants to take um, the Icicle Crash is going to be Tentacruel. Mega Steelix can take one. Um, I could have even run Low Kick here, but really since Low Kick only hits two of his Pokemon, I decided to go for the extra um, the extra damage, really. Knock Off is really nice because I expect to see Togekiss or Tentacruel, or even to a lesser extent a physically defensive, uh, maybe even a Rocky Helmet Dredagon trying to switch into um, 
a knockoff here. I don't expect it to be switching in there because Icicle Crash will ruin Dreadicon's day. But uh, Pursuit, Pursuit knockoff shenanigans should be able to su sufficiently pressure a lot of his team, which I do like that. Our last member is going to be a little bit of glue for this team. Um, this is a really weird Blastoise set on the EVs. Uh, so with 244, 204 defense, modest nature, and this is natural special defense, there is no move that a Specs or Banded Victini can go for, including Bolt Strike or even Grass Knot, that will one hit KO Mega Blastoise after I switch into Stealth Rocks. Um, so that means I can Liberty Hit and hit it back with the Scald. Awesome. Furthermore, if he has, uh, say, Thunderfang on Mega Steelix, I can take that. If he has, um, if he has plus one or even I think plus two, I think if I copped it properly with Tyranitar via Dragon Dance, I can take any hit there too, and I can at least threaten the burn with Scald. Ice Beam is purely there for the Dredagon and the Togekiss which I do have a little bit of speed investment here for Togekiss. If Togekiss doesn't invest in speed, it hits base 100. I mean, I'm sorry, it hits 100 speed. And so I'm thinking he might try to throw a, a speed point in there just to say, oh, I need to outspeed Blastoise. And so I put two there, basically, just so I can maybe edge it out just a little bit. That can help out if Togekiss is trying to roost up or something, I can hit him before he roost. Um, some of these other Pokemon, like Rotom, uh, Blastoise being so heavily invested in HP means I can take a Thunderbolt, it means I can take a Volt Switch. Fire also fire off the Dark Pulse because Dark Pulse is actually fantastic neutral coverage against his team. Uh, a lot of the things that can take a Dark Pulse don't really want to take a Scald or be risk for the burn. So I want to kind of put him in a situation where he's like, okay, do I want to set something up? Do I want to risk this? Or what is his real option there? The way we're going to win this battle really is by just wearing down his team with his first three Pokemon here. And that's why depending on what he has, either Primate or uh, Rotom are going to be my leads. If he leads off with Victini, I kind of have to assume that it's Scarfed and go directly into Blastoise. Blastoise actually might not be a bad lead either because I can immediately get off my Mega Evolution. And if he brings a Riados, I'm going to think that that's going to be one of his leads too. Maybe with the Focus Sash, that way he can set up Sticky Webs. But uh, he's actually been doing some work with Ariado, so that's not anything that I'm going to sleep on. I rather enjoy using Ariados, even if it's supposed to be a spider and it only has six legs. Ariados is still a cool Pokemon in my book. So that's going to be the team up. Uh, excuse me, the team analysis for this week. We're going to be battling on Sunday, and I'm recording this on Friday night, at like one in the morning. So we will definitely see how this matchup goes. We have, I, I definitely have his number this time because. I, I haven't beaten Sly before, so I believe it is time for that to come back around for our favor. So I thank you so much for watching my video, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll just enjoy the battle. Alright guys, bye now. Okay, so if you took the time to watch the team video, thank you very much. If not, welcome to this part of the battle video. Uh, we can see that Sly actually ended up bringing almost exactly what I thought he would bring. Um, didn't exactly expect the Tyranitar. That's completely fine. Um, as far as the lead that I was expecting to go off with here, really Rotom, Cut Form, my Magneton, or Primeape all made good leads because I could Volt Switch out or you turn out of any situation. Unless, unless, of course, he led with the Victini or Steelix. In those situations, I really thought that Blastoise would be the best lead. And then when I really looked at his team a little bit more, looked like he would probably be leading with Steelix or Victini. Um, Tyranitar could also be a possible lead, but any of my Volt Switchers slash U-Turners beat that lead. So since I, I felt like there was a high probability he would lead with Steelix to try to get up rocks immediately, just because of, based on my team structure, you can look at it and tell that I'm going to be Volt Switching around a good bit. It did seem like Blastoise was going to be the best lead. Leading with Blastoise would also allow me to get off my Mega Evolution immediately, so that means that Victini can't one-hit KO me uh, if it happens to be Specs or Bandit. Um, and of course, we still do have uh, a Choice Scarf Primate, Choice Specs, Rotom, Cut Form, a nice bulky Blastoise with a modest nature. Um, a speedy Magneton, I guess is the right way to say that, with Eviolite, and then Life Orb, 
Garchomp and Life Orb Weavile with Garchomp having Sword Stance, Weavile just being all out attacking with Pursuit in case he goes for V Create. So, I really like those options for this match. He brought what I expected him to bring. We can actually go ahead and get into this battle now. Um, so with Blastoise as our lead, that does mean if he happens to lead off with his Rotom, uh, that situation means that we need to switch out. So unfortunately, that's exactly what happens. And this is the start of a lot of Volt switching in this match. I decided to go out into my Rotom cut form just to threaten the idea that I might be Scarfed. That dissuades him from going into Victini, but since he goes directly into Victini, that means that his Victini is most likely Scarfed, because uh, otherwise, why would he risk me being Scarfed and getting off such heavy damage on his Victini? Now, I go out into Garchomp here, I need to see if he's physical or special or mixed or what have you. He goes for Blue Flare, and to me, that means that he's either Scarf in physical or, I'm sorry, Scarf in mix or Scarf with a very, very nice uh, just special build. Now I went for Rockside there, chancing that Togekiss might want to switch in, but seeing the damage on Rotom, he's definitely bulky. And I knew he was going to Will-O-Wisp here, so I just decided to go out into Magneton, who doesn't mind getting burned. I went for a Volt Switch right here, just because I thought he would want to stay in and go for a Volt Switch of his own. But he just goes directly out into Steelix, and I was really close to clicking Hidden Power Fire just to get off good damage onto the Rotom. That would have been great for Steelix, because I would have gotten the boost from Analytic. Now, he does Mega Evolve here. I just went for Magnet Rise just in case he tried to Earthquake me. Um, I figured if he stayed in, that means that he's fairly confident about his ability to take the attack. And so that would mean especially defensive Steelix, which would be really annoying for this Magneton. And look at that damage. Steelix eats that up. And that is definitely a very especially defensive Steelix. Because uh, that was a super effective hit. <laughs> it didn't even do half his HP. Uh, Dragon Tail nicely sends us out into Primeape. Here we have to click Stone Edge in case Togekiss wants to come in. Actually, Rotom comes in, but unfortunately I miss, which sucks because that could have been a 2-hit KO depending on how bulky he was. Uh, and since I have to switch out, that means he gets a free Volt Switch and so much uh, momentum on his side of the field from me missing that stupid Stone Edge right there. But that's why I was running Rock Slide on Garchomp. I didn't want to miss Stone Edge too much this battle. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have a switch into Victini. And Magneton has to go down right here. I could have gone back on the Garchomp, but that's risking the burn. He also could have swapped up his move. What's nice is that I get a fresh switch into Blastoise. I can Mega Evolve right here. And if he wants to switch out, great. If he wants to stay in, he's going to eat a Scald. Um, he does switch in Togekiss, which tells me that his Togekiss is actually probably especially defensive too. I'm praying for a burn here because I figured, eh, maybe I can snag a burn on something. Don't get the burn and just looking at that damage. Man, that is a very bulky Togekiss. Uh, I decided to swap out here because I thought he would go for Thunder Wave. He actually goes for a Wish. And, um, spoilers, he doesn't have Thunder Wave. This whole time I was worried about my team getting paralyzed and then him being able to para flinch things. And so you see me switch around a lot, trying to predict when he's going to go for Thunder Wave. Now here I did figure he'd switch out, so I just went straight for a Specs Leaf Storm and I happened to catch Rotom switching in to receive the Wish. And that Wish is wasted, which is great. He can't go switch around my team anymore. But now he knows that I'm choice locked. It is nice that he doesn't know if I'm Specs or uh, or Scarf, but he knows that I'm choice locked, of course. I go down into Garchomp, and Togekiss has, you know, it has a little bit of chip damage on it. And I go straight for Sword Stance, thinking that he has Thunder Waver, that he has to switch out here, maybe even Baton Pass. And he goes straight for Dazzling Gleam, and that was incredibly demoralizing. After I saw a Wish, I figured Wish, Protect, Air Slash, Thunder Wave. But he has Dazzling Gleam, Air Slash, Wish Protect, and that is pretty terrible. Um, I could have at least gotten off some solid damage right there if I had gone for Rock Slide. Uh, here, I figured Tentacruel was coming in, but I also figured after an Icicle Crash, two knockoffs will definitely KO it. Um, Icicle Crash does about a quarter of his health, which is pretty impressive considering this looks like a physically defensive Tentacruel. Um, and he just goes for Sludge Bomb, and since Weavile has decent special defense, I actually take that relatively well. But he lives on a sliver, and now Weavile is going to go down to Tentacruel, and that was terrible. At this point, I've lost Garchomp and Weavile, and all I have left are my Volt Switchers and Blastoise, basically. 
So here I go out in the primate just to, if he's gonna switch out, I get the switching priority if he stays in. This allows me to kind of safely go back out into Blastoise who can kind of threaten anything he has bar the Togekiss. Uh, and I do have Ice Beam for Togekiss, but uh, Togekiss is so bulky that it's not a two hit KO because I don't have that much special attack investment. Um, I am surprised to see that he outspeeds. I actually may have gotten my speed EVs wrong. Because Sly told me after the match that he didn't have any speed on his Togekiss, so I, I may have calculated something wrong. I definitely had 28 speed on my Blastoise. But um, here I knew he was going to heal up, so I was like, please burn, please burn, don't get the burn again, and he's at full HP. This is a really, really annoying battle of attrition. Here we're going to go out into my Rotom just to threaten him. I figured he'd either wish up or go for another Air Slash. And of course, at the, all this time, we still haven't seen Protect, so I'm still worried about Thunder Wave this whole time. So switching into Rotom, I was like, if he's going to paralyze me, he might do it now. And here I get the 50-50 wrong. I thought for sure he'd stay in there, um, or at the very least, switch out to, if he switched to Victini, maybe I could get rid of the Scarf. Granted, Specs Victini is not something I want to play around with either, uh, but... Um, yeah, that sucked. If I had just gone for Lee Storm there, I would have killed the Steelix, which would have been phenomenal. But Scald actually does pretty decent damage, and after taking this Earthquake, unfortunately that means that we have lost this battle. Uh, the reason I lose right there is because now Blastoise can no longer take a hit from Victini, and Victini can lock into Blue Flare and basically clean up the team from this range. Uh, I still need a burn on Togekiss to even relatively pull this back. Alternatively, I cannot flinch here and get a high damage roll and have a chance of taking him out. Uh, but he just goes straight for Air Slash, and I was like, please don't flinch, just break through. But I flinch, unfortunately. He gets back up to full. This is just not uh, not my, my match to win here. Now, that doesn't mean that we give up, though. I still wanted to lower the differential. And of course, I had a full health Primate and a relatively healthy Rotom cut form. I figured I could go into Rotom Cut and pick up the KO on Togekiss here because all he had to do was wait to see what I was locked into, then switch something in. He stays in as I just go for a Specs Thunderbolt and that doesn't kill him and that was just like really... But I do get a little bit of um, solace in the fact that he missed an Air Slash, I guess. Uh, yeah, so that's the thing. He went for Air Slash probably expecting Primate to switch in. Right now I switched out into Primate thinking he'd go for a Wish, but then he goes for Air Slash. But hey, remember that tiny bit of HP I put on the Primate? I actually live the Air Slash, which was kind of impressive to me. Unfortunately, I have to go for Stone Edge here as he finally, finally reveals the Protect. He had it all along. Very, very sneaky Sly. He finally reveals Protect, and now that he knows that I'm locked into Stone Edge, you can go easily out into anything, basically, besides his Victini. Uh, and this is smart on his part because at this point he's just saving his differential instead of it being a 2 or 3 0. He can have it be a 4 0 by having the Sandstorm knock on my Primate. I couldn't have switched out, of course, because there's entry hazards up. And when I go out into my Rotom, I have to go for Leaf Storm. Um, I could have gone for Thunderbolt there, but that wouldn't have KO'd the uh, Tyranitar. And of course, if he switched into Steelix, it would have been completely pointless too. So. That's kind of what I had to go for. Unfortunately, that's going to be the end of this battle. Thank you very much, Sly, for the match. And this just means that we really, really, really need to win next week if we want to stay in that top three team range. Now, uh, next week, we're actually up against the Tampa Bay Lux Rays, which that battle is not something that I'm looking forward to. But we're going to do our very, very best to end things in a fantastic result for the Eternity Enders once again. So thank you all so much for watching this battle video and thank you very much kelly for taking the time to record it for me because i was able to get it up on time thanks to you and i'll see you guys next time goodbye now